the three remaining successors, Jonathan, Simon, and John Hyrcanus. Now, Jonathan and John are different people. So, so we'll go up Jonathan and we have John. And I'm going to say John Hyrcanus for John. Jonathan is the most senior brother. He is declared kind of owner and rule, kind of ruler of the rebellion. He reaches out to Rome to try and get some kind of treaty in place. What that means is probably very little because it didn't really stop the Seleucids from continuing to try and attack the uh, Maccabees and their control over the region. But at least it's something on paper at which Jonathan can point to that says even the great power of Rome recognizes our right to independence. Jonathan eventually makes peace with Antiochus by helping to support Antiochus, and this is now, I think, Antiochus VI, Thorat, who's a child. He makes a peace with him because a guy by the name of Trypho is the regent, and this regent, Trypho, tries to seize control of the Seleucid Empire. Trypho is able to capture and trick Jonathan. And this lets the other brother, Simon now, take over. He defeats Trypho in battle. Trypho has Jonathan killed in spite. So now we have Simon and John Hyrcanus are the last of the two sons of Matthias. Still in that first generation of the revolt. Simon has a very successful uh, military campaign. He's got seasoned soldiers with him now. They've been fighting several battles. They've been able to collect a lot more quality of gear. He captures a lot more cities, villages, expands the power base, captures garrison. Simon makes peace with Antiochus and the Seleucids and offers himself as a mercenary force to help take down Trypho. Pardon me, Trypho. Antiochus eventually betrays Simon, who tries to attack Judea, tries to get his lands back. However, Simon, in a set-piece battle, has a definitive battle against the Seleucids, and this is the battle which typically marks the beginning of Jerusalem independence with Simon Maccabee. Now we're at what I would call, what I like to call, the Game of Thrones period of the Maccabee family. Simon is now in charge. He's kind of had that set piece battle. Jerusalem is officially independent, and I say officially in quotes because there is undoubtedly some agreement between the Ptolemies, or pardon me, with the Seleucids and with the Maccabee family and probably other people from the Sanhedrin, the ruling council in Jerusalem. There, as my previous guest, my an expert on the time period, Boris Krubasik put it, Jerusalem is in a state of um, quote-unquote vassalhood and not vassalhood between themselves and the Seleucids. There is clearly generational ties still in place that link important, powerful people within Jerusalem and the Judean countryside with the Ptolemy, or pardon me, with the Seleucids. And these people clearly still have political sway within Jerusalem. And Simon has not yet nailed down full control over the city, full control over the countryside. They're very clearly the Maccabees are an ascendant power. They hold the army. They're the high priests. 
there have a lot of political sway, but undoubtedly the Seleucids definitely still have their fingers in a lot of pies in Jerusalem, and the Maccabees still treat them with kid gloves. They don't just reject what they say. There is political um, fallout if they do not or if they have a disagreement of some severity with the Seleucids.